Happy NFL playoff kickoff day. Welcome into another episode of Rip and Riff here on the Fantasy Alarm and BSN YouTube pages. I'm Adam Bernard at Pucking Thoughts on Twitter. And with me, as always, uh, my guy on the right here, Mr. Jared Moore and reigning two time Dynasty League champion. Uh, two of those, uh, both of those over me. Congrats again, champ. How are we doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, please don't refer to me as champ because it's just a little, it's a little awkward. You know, we're talking about a, a fake made up game, uh, which is uh, kind of an awkward way to, uh, you know, do that. And like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to walk around like the, I have a championship belt, but like, it's obviously it's a wrestling championship belt. It's not, I didn't get it specifically made for fantasy. I didn't even bother to dig it out of the closet today because it's just like, you know, it's it's kind of awkward to kind of refer to yourself in like the third person like that. Like, you know, the champ is here, like a, like your John Cena or something. So, uh, I uh, wasn't trying to make a, any more of a bigger deal about it than you are. But now that I've rambled on for about forty five seconds about it, it's kind of awkward, and I'm looking for a way out now. So, uh, well, anytime well, you, you want to jump in and interrupt me, you're more than welcome. You're the, champ, you're the champion of my heart too. Um, all right, oh, so thank you. So before we get going on the, we have a little show and tell here today, just going through some old stuff, cleaning some stuff out. We're going to take you back to 1993 when McDonald's had a promo going with the NFL where they gave out game day cards. And they're like the tall boys that, and these are the sheets of the cards. The, um, they're kind of the same like length as the tall boy that you pulled out from a hockey pack a few weeks ago. But yeah, here's page one. You got Mo Lewis, Jeff Lagerman, Kyle Clifton on there. Uh, this How about page, that? I don't remember this from McDonald's. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting. I remember, yeah, they had these. I had, the, I think, I had a Giants one too. Um, I think my dad was able to get the Bears ones when he was on on a business trip in Chicago. But yeah, the Immortal Browning Nagel, Jets quarterback, Rob Moore, good receiver there. Blair Thomas, uh, thanks Pat Kerwin for that one. Uh, and then let's see here. Finally, this so this was Shout Boomer, to Pat Kerwin. We like that. Pat Kerwin, he, he gets mad when people say that. Uh, Ronnie Lott, uh, Boomer Esiason, and James Hasty. Uh, well, was Leonard Marshall, Terrence Mathis, Marvin Jones. So yeah, I, I found these. Figured it'd be cool to show them to uh, kick off the show here. Oh, that's that's cool. Uh, if we we're doing show and tell, I probably would have come up with something. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything as neat and nostalgic as that. I mean, I I, I suppose I could go to McDonald's uh, after the show and see what they're giving away now because it's probably nowhere near as cool as that. It's probably I don't know. Happy Meal is probably. Hot Wheels and Barbie for the eight billionth time would be my yeah. guess. They have adult Happy Meals now. Did you know that? I did not. Although that, do, do the adult Happy Meals come with the toy? They do. It's like there's like McDonald's Town kind of thing. I don't know. It's it's yeah. It's it's basically a Happy Meal, but you can get a Big Mac or a ten piece chicken nuggets instead. So it's like an adult size portion Happy Meal with right. apparently that, that's interesting I, I didn't know that. i consider myself a fast food uh connoisseur but uh mcdonald's is not my go-to choice even though it's one of the the big four here we have uh you know what we call fast food alley here you have mcdonald's and then across the street you have wendy's and taco bell and then like just a little bit further down the road is kfc all right well i mean you know I, I like burger king and yeah i'm not a mcdonald's guy but my daughter's in that phase because like obviously the happy meal has its own box it's got the toy four years old that's like the peak audience for it so yeah we've been uh fast food has been there lately but let's get back to pack ripping here on uh mm. r and r uh we, we're gonna go football and hockey today uh let me show you we're gonna go cup chasing again i know we did that last week but why not you know i opened up a pack uh on new year's eve uh we're recording this on new year's day and it was a garbage pack so i'm uh, looking forward to maybe getting something better there and then what we're gonna go through is the 97 98 uh pinnacle nhl series here and uh, here's what we're looking for. There's the pack right there. Pretty cool looking pack. And then what we're looking for there, we got some Marion Hosa rookies now. Uh, Joe Thornton and Marlo kind of rookies. They're like a rookie subset, so they're not a true rookie, but nonetheless, those exist in there. So uh, that's what I'm looking for today when I bring some hockey to the table. Jared, what do you got? Uh, so I've been mentioning I wanted to do some more like mid 2000s mid 2010s uh football packs especially and especially like remember some fantasy football guys so uh i found uh this uh while i was perusing ebay uh a couple packs of the 2016 uh panini football packs it's just panini football uh so uh not the prisms but uh you know obviously they've had a deal with the nfl for quite a while now and uh we uh, obviously trust the panini name uh, that they'll give us a quality product here. So I have no idea what these cards will look like, but 
Um, yeah, you're seeing some of the rookies there. Uh, that was the Jared Goff number one overall draft pick. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott was a top five pick. Um, uh, uh, Derrick Henry, uh, Carson Wentz uh, was in that draft class. Uh, Tyree Kill was also a rookie that year. But the guy we really want out of that draft class is Dak Prescott, former yeah. fourth round pick. We kind of feel like. I mean, uh, we, I mean, I kind of feel like there's probably a bunch of Dak Prescott rookie cards floating around out there that uh, have yet to be unearthed. So we got a couple packs here of that. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we unearth a Dak Prescott rookie card. That'd be a nice uh, little surprise to start off the, the new year. Also, Derrick Henry would be, a, I know quarterbacks are the better rookies to have, but a Derrick Henry rookie cer- certainly won't be a bad one to find either. So uh, maybe we see that one. Um, yeah, so uh, I think without further ado, I'm just going to jump the gun yeah. and get right into it. I was going to say, if you want to kick or to receive, but, you know, I, like you said, the panini, even the base panini is still going to look better than, like, 90% of the market out there. So let's get ripping yep. here. Yeah, let's get ripping here. I have to break open the uh, the box cutter, unfortunately. But uh, we will start uh, this pack with... Uh, <laughs> All right, this card's funny. I already like the look of this these cards, and uh, we start out with the guy who uh, is still getting it done. He's still elite at this age, Joe Flacco. That is a good card to start with, and yeah, it's the first day of the playoffs, so uh, we don't know who the Browns matchup is at the time of this recording, but my man, what, what, talk about just taking a guy off the street and just, he, he, what does he do? He goes out and throws for like two, 300 yards every week, a few touchdowns. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal at all. I mean... I feel like as a Jet fan, you probably have to look at a, a little bit of a wasted opportunity that, you know, after Rodgers gets hurt, it's like you couldn't assign Joe Flacco, who was on the team the last couple of years. But um, I, I, I don't want to twist the knife anymore for uh, Jets fans. They've Stop wrong. assuming that they have common sense in the way they run that organization. That's your mistake. Yeah, that that is uh, my mistake. <laughs> I, I assume they're just a normal organization, but no, they they've proven time and time again they're not serious uh, operation there Correct. uh one of the better linebackers of his day uh from your indianapolis colts robert mathis robert mathis hell of a pass rusher definitely not a guy you wanted to line up against as an offensive lineman yep and uh we follow that up with uh, one of the best safeties uh in the nfl uh and this must have been right after he joined the philadelphia eagles malcolm jenkins yeah, you know, Jenkins, you know, he had this, I think he played with the Saints too for a bit, you know, great, good, very good defensive back. I like the look of those cards too. Yeah, I like the design of these cards. Uh, uh, we go right from there to uh, one of the great fantasy running backs of his day uh, before, uh, you know, same thing happened to every running back. They get old and they decline. They take the big money elsewhere. Uh, DeMarco Murray from your Tennessee Titans. He had a couple of years there where he was like one of the top guys, and then yeah, he faded quickly. Yep, and uh, uh, another guy who was uh, pretty good for for a little bit until he kind of dropped off uh, from your Green Bay Packers, James Starks. James Starks, you know the kind of guy in that mold where like you know, flash in the pan, had a few uh, big games, and then. Eh. Uh, so we go right from that. I don't know if this is a rookie. No, this is not a rookie card, unfortunately. But uh, he still uh, had a little bit of a down year this year, but he's still uh, one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. Stephon Diggs from your Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, that's a, the old Vikings card there. That looks that looks cool. And then, yeah, it, it wasn't the best year in Buffalo in general, but you know, we'll see what happens here. Uh, like we said, at the time of this recording, you know, Buffalo could win the division or miss the playoffs entirely, so. And uh, we finished the pack with uh, with a couple rookie cards here. Uh, Braxton Miller from your tennis uh, from your Houston Texans. Okay, coming out of the Ohio State University, and uh, Jarrell Adams from the New York Giants, uh, tight end. So uh, uh, didn't get the the rookie we were looking for there out of the out of this pack. And uh, uh, last but not least, we get the insert telling us to uh, to download the Panini app. So. Uh, we'll be sure to get right on that. Uh, there's your QR code, so go ahead and scan it if you want the Panini app. There you go. There you go. We sure. got another pack, though. I, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, it's been repurposed for NFTs and uh, uh, AI generated cards and uh, all the weird technological stuff that I'm too dumb to understand. I wonder what the turnover is on a QR code, or if they're just all unique. Um, it's a good question. Well, uh, how about this? Uh, I, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to add, add, out of the blue, I'm going to scan this QR code and see what see happens. What yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. That so wasn't we'll, great. We flew through it. Let, let's see what happens. 
Well, it says code Panini uh, Gridiron, so. And I mean, then maybe they just use the same PR uh, QR code and then it's, here. <laughs> right, and then it says this site can't be reached. So uh, I'm going to go on a limb and guess that that site is no longer active. Probably not. No, it's not. So uh, we start off uh, pack number two here. Uh, solid player. Uh, probably a little bit of a disappointment in his heyday, but uh, from your Dallas Cowboys, Terrence Williams. Okay. All right. I mean, Cowboys, uh, maybe next year will be looking for a better wide receiver too, but CeeDee Lamb certainly had a stud season. Yeah, he's really kind of uh, emerged as, uh, I mean... <sighs> If he's not the best wide receiver in the NFL, he's certainly on the short list. Like, Top if you three. were gonna, yeah, I mean, if well, even going into like fantasy redraft leagues next year, it'd probably be Tyreek one. Probably has to be Lamb number two, right? Yeah, I mean, Jefferson's coming off a year where he missed a lot of games, so that's another that's the name you would logically throw in there. But maybe Jamar Chase, a little bit. thing. Yeah, Chase. I mean. Jefferson probably has a little more upside than Chase next year, I feel like, because, I mean, he missed a nice chunk of the season, but we'll see who the Vikings quarterback's going to be. I mean, Chase will have Burrow back. So, yeah, I mean, those are your top four, I think, for sure. Uh, one of the best wide receivers in his day. He uh, just retired earlier this season, but uh, from your Cincinnati Bengals, A.J. Green. A.J. Green, yeah. He, uh, he finished with, what, the Cardinals was his last team? Yeah, I believe so, yes. And uh, uh, hell of a career. Future, future, uh, no, I can't speak. Future first ballot Hall of Famer, but yeah, AJ Green is uh, tremendous, and uh, I, I think it was him and uh, it was him and Julio in the same draft class, right? And we yeah. saw just saw Julio get it done a couple weeks ago uh, against uh, <laughs> against the Cardinals fantasy championship weekend, and we got Julio uh, Julio Jones uh, at age thirty four or whatever it is catching multiple touchdowns. Uh, not AJ yeah, Brown, also, not Devonta Smith, Julio Jones. Right. Right, and we all saw that coming. Uh, a guy who is a Hall of Famer because he just got in this past year, your guy, Darrell Revis from the New York Jets. Now, that's a good-looking card right there. And I always love when the Jets do the white tops with the green pants. It's always a good look. But, yeah, Revis, one of my all-time favorite Jets. I mean, for like a good two, three-year window there, he was, you know, the, the Revis Island was a real deal. Quarterbacks didn't. He, people are like, oh, you have no stats. Yeah, because quarterbacks never threw at him because they knew better. Right. Uh, guy, I can't believe is still in the lake. Uh, this might be his last year though. So, uh, shout out to Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Yeah. Seahawks. He, he managed to make his way into that, uh, Saints tight end room. That's just a complete cluster. Fuck part of my French, but it, no, that's, I that's mean, really what it is. It really is. Yeah. It's not, not one I'd, uh, really be looking to, uh, invest in any of those guys i mean like juan johnson's the guy but like even that or it's just like you know you have Taysom hill stealing looks you have jimmy graham just jimmy graham i think has like four catches this year and three of them were touchdowns Touchdowns. yeah i mean you got too many hands for one position yeah well (laughs) yeah definitely not a fan of too many hands there uh ryan Tannehill from the miami dolphins so i mean you got to figure what's good you know if the titans go to levis I mean, with Tannehill, what is he? A, he's got to be a backup now. I mean, I don't know if anybody's getting a chance to start, but I could see him absolutely being a backup somewhere and being a reliable backup. I think Ryan Tannehill is going to be like the 32nd best starting quarterback next year. Like, I, I think somebody's going to sign him to be like a low end starter. He's going to be the guy that somebody signs uh, while they also draft a rookie quarterback. And uh, all right, Ryan Tannehill is your veteran for the first. You know, eight or so eight games uh, where, you know, the, the rookie can learn the ropes behind him. But now we have a veteran here where, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, at least for the first month or so of the season, like before everyone figures out that Ryan Tannehill can't play that. Uh, all right. He gives us a chance to win games in the meantime. So. Or I could see him if that's not the scenario, he goes somewhere where like there's an established number one and it's like, OK, you're clearly going to be the number two. But hey, if he goes down, you're going to have a nice team to play with. Like that's the other scenario. Yep. Um, all right, we finish this pack here. Uh, Cole Beasley from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Pre anti-vax stuff. So uh, shout out to Cole Beasley. Not in that wave of, uh, you know, short white guy receivers like Julian Edelman. <laughs> um. Ooh, this is an interesting rookie card. 
Uh, this is one you would probably want, but uh, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to give it to you. We have an autograph rookie card of DeForest Buckner. Ooh. Now, the reason you would think I'd well, he'd think I'd want that is because DeForest Buckner has been an anchor for one of my Dynasty League teams for years. So uh, that is a good looking card. That is a nice pull. That's, that that's is, nice. That makes this uh, these packs worth it here. Because uh, unfortunately, our other rookie card is a little bit underwhelming here as I drop the the one card in this you, pack. You dropped the autograph. The, you, know, you could make an argument that Buckner could be a Hall of Fame defensive tackle when everything's said and done. Yeah, I mean... I mean, it's a position that doesn't get the get a lot of love to begin with. And, uh, you know, Aaron Donald clearly is the best of his era. But, I mean, Buckner is up there. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem with Buckner is he's going to be compared against the guys of his era. So, obviously, Donald's number one. Sue. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and Dominic on Sue maybe a little bit before. Uh, Fletcher Cox, I think, has to be in that in that discussion. Um, there's somebody else I'm forgetting right now. Chris Jones. Uh, yeah. I, I think is also in that mix as well. So uh, he's somewhere probably on that second tier. And generally speaking, when you're on that That's second tier, enough. it's 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 an uphill climb to get in the Hall of Fame with how much the backlog just builds up and builds up uh, year after year. Uh, so we finished this pack. Uh, we got the, obviously the kid reporter thing here, which is probably no good anymore. So no. yeah, go ahead and redeem that code if you want there. Uh, H9MP, blah, 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 blah. So. Go ahead and do that if, you, that, if folks. you're if you're so inclined. But we finished with a guy where I drafted him in one of my dynasty leagues, one of these year and one of these years, and he just never really turned out to be anything. And I feel like one of these guys where he's your guy and you're just upset because you feel like you never really got a shot, but he never got a shot anywhere. So it kind of is what it is. Uh, from your Buffalo Bills, Jonathan Williams. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to describe him. Uh, but that's a decent way to close the pack there. I, I, I don't want to trade for the Buckner pack, but I am interested in that Revis card. So uh, keep that, keep that handy. Uh, we will definitely keep the Revis card uh, handy for you. And that does it for uh, 2016 uh, Panini football packs. So uh, overall, very pleased with how the cards look, and uh, pleased uh, at least with the Forrest Buckner uh, autograph card. Autograph yeah, rookie I card. Yeah, so like I, when you open the first pack, like the Flacco is a nice card, but like whatever, you know, the Stefan Diggs good card. Okay, that pack wasn't great, and then we was moving along, but then yeah, that the Forest Buckner really just that 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 was worth it. Yep. All, All right, right, buddy. Do we want to cup chase first, or do we want to do a little Pinnacle ninety seven ninety eight? Oh, uh, I think we cup chase first. We want the cup, baby. Do is that what we want? All right. That's right, we're hunting the 1990 Pro Set 1 of 5,000 Stanley Cup Hologram card on Rip and Riff. For the second week in a row, we're going uh, hologram chasing here. You know, one thing I just noticed about this pack, by the way, you know that like BS, like orange discount card that comes in everyone? Uh, see NHL discount card for complete details. Void in Kansas, Washington, and Wyoming. Why were in those three states were you not allowed to redeem a ten cent hockey coupon card? I would love to know. Well, that's a rough deal if you happen to live in Tacoma or Billings or uh, Topeka. But uh... good three pulls off the top here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's, it's a bad beat there if you're going for one of those, but uh, it's also 30 years after the fact, so I I, I think uh, the moment is past. The moment is past. We don't have any holograms. We'll go through the car. We'll go through the pack quickly and stop on the good ones. Well, Gary Nile in there. The I love that blue and orange of the Islanders. Uh, what else we got here? We got Steve Thomas, who was a good Blackhawk swinger for a little while. Also played it with the Islanders for a little bit. Uh, the Calder card. So, this, so uh, we've gotten this one before. This is the Sergey Makarov one. We talked about whether you know rookies should be allowed to win it when they played professionally in other countries for many years. Uh, Steve Conroy, who was doing Blackhawks games for a little while on TV. Andrew McBain, King Clancy Trophy, uh, tro which I don't even know if they talk about that much anymore. But Kevin Lowe won it that year. Uh, Bernie Federko. Uh, from uh, who's more of a famous for being a St. Louis Blue uh, on the tele TV telecast. Now we got a devil here, uh, all time uh, good player in the franchise, Johnny Mac. Johnny Mac, how about that? That would go very nicely. We could do that Revis for Johnny Mac trade, and that'll go beautifully with this uh, 
Actually, no, this isn't Johnny Mac. This is a Sergey Breland autograph puck. I, I need to get a Johnny Mac. That, that's the last one I need for my like go to Devil's autograph puck shelf. Well, we're going to put this in a penny sleeve right now, so that way it's nice and secure for when it makes its way out to uh, your hometown. Uh, the guy who wore 11 before Mark Messier in, in New York, Kelly Kissio. Good-looking Ranger card there, if nothing else. Yeah, good-looking Ranger card. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, kind of a, an afterthought in uh, Rangers' uh, lore. Yeah. Being, uh, the number 11 before uh, the captain. Now we got uh, Shane Shirley here from the Minnesota North Stars. He was a decent, like, third line winger for many years, bounced around the league. Uh, we got Marty McSorley. Would you, say, who, would you say they churled him around the league? I don't got the rim shot thing ready, but good one. I don't, I'll have that on the wall for next time. Good job. Good, good job. Good job. Uh, we got Marty McSorley here, best known for being uh, Gretzky's protector in his LA days, uh, among other things. Uh, so let's see. Good looking card there. Uh, let's see. I think here it's so important to have guys like that, uh, to have a, your Marty McSorley types. I mean, I, I know the league's kind of gotten away from it, but, you know, I say this as, you know, a Devils fan, like the one thing that irritates me the most with that team is like, I feel like other teams, you know, especially a team with younger, smaller forwards who don't really stick up for themselves. You can kind of take physical liberties with them and you can push them around a little bit. And like, I, I think you need, you know, for lack of a better term, you need assholes on your team. You, you, you can't carry uh, you of your 20 spots, and let's face it, 18 skater spots. You can't afford to carry just a guy who's a, 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 like a I'm trying to think of like a fighter, like a, like a Todd Fedorik or somebody like that. You can't keep you can't carry somebody like that anymore. But if it's a guy that can win face offs, this is the guy that can kill penalties. Now you can. Ca you, I think every team needs to have a guy, especially like you said, in the devil situation where a lot of these smaller guys that are easy to push around to begin with. And if they don't fight for themselves, it's very easy to lose a playoff series that way. Right, and uh, like I think that's a reason why they keep someone like a Brendan Smith around because he's not afraid to to necessarily scrap, and that's why like like when he was a free agent this past year, like off season, like I, I wanted Radko Gudis on the Devils just because like like that's a guy like you do not want to play against in in a playoff series because like he's just he's a prick, he's a prick on the ice, and he's not like a he's not a defensive liability either. He plays his game. Listen, is Radko Gudis going to? Uh... Get your goals and assists? No, but he does. No, all he's the never going to win a Norris team. Trophy. But like, you need guys like that to make a deep playoff run. So yeah, I completely agree. I'd, every team needs somebody that, when uh, the guys take the ice, they got to think about him being on the bench or maybe being out on the uh, a simultaneous shift. That you don't want to be on the ice with that guy. Every team needs that guy. Yeah. Uh, so sh shout out to Marty McSorley. Shout out to Marty McSorley. Now we got Bob Airy here, who uh, was doing Penguins games for a while too. Uh, so there you go. Two more cards to go in this pack. No hologram. Excuse me. Three more cards to go. Uh, we got a Wayne Gretzky uh, point leader. So the Art Ross Art Ross Trophy winner that year for Wayne Gretzky. Mm, very nice. And then we got two All Star cards here. We got a uh, Pat Lafontaine, uh, all time Saber and Islander. There. I feel like we pulled Pat Lafontaine before in this set. Maybe maybe I'm mistaken on that though. We probably have uh, Pat LaFontaine, good dude, and a guy that you have guessed in the uh, starting lineup figure five questioning, Dave Andrzejczyk. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty pleased with that guess uh, last week. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was not correct, but, uh, you know, the logic was there behind it. Logic was there, but nonetheless, this was the man that came out. We'll talk about the studio, starting lineup studio audience later. That is Mr. Tay Mussolini. Uh, Very nice. Uh, we will uh, get into that later. Now, I believe it is time. So we got Johnny Mac off to the side. No hologram there, sadly. We still got another pack of hockey cards, and that's a cool wrapper right there with the Van Beesbrook mask there. Yeah, way to capitalize on the popularity of the Florida Panthers in 1996. Uh, I, I, I think that pack probably did a better job than uh, the team itself in terms of uh, you know marketing the team and carrying over that sustainability from year to year. <laughs> That team, that that run that the Panthers had, I mean, they got swept by the Avalanche that year in the finals, but that was a fun run to watch. They had a, they, it, that was a good year. That was, that, they, they needed it. All right. Okay. <laughs> so it's just a stupid gray, uh, it's a discount card. I thought it was like one of those redeemable cards. But nonetheless. Uh, it's a good looking card though. All right, let's get started here. Uh, we've got from uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning and played on many teams in his NHL career, Dino Cicerelli. 
played with the North Stars, the Capitals, the Wings. These are good-looking cards. Those are great-looking cards. Dino Cicerelli is one of those guys I would always trade for in, like, NHL 95 or 96 or whatever year it was where you could do the trades. Because he, like, he was always a solid goal scorer. And he's a tough guy. So speak, the conversation we just had, he was a guy that had no problem being like, you want to go? We'll go. He had no issue with that. And they uh, did up fighting in those games. Now, we do have uh, Alexei Kovalev from the New York Rangers here. Uh, this was uh, before he got traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins, I believe. But there you go. Good looking card. Let me get my finger off the font. Get the there hologram on the name. Not a rookie card, correct? Yeah, because no. Kovalev was on that 94 team, right? I don't even know if he was a rookie year. that year. He was a rookie that year, correct. Yeah. Uh, speaking of rookies, we do have one, but not a rookie we are really hoping for. But nonetheless, Eric Rasmussen from the Buffalo Sabres. And you love that. You're a big fan of that Sabre look, right? I'm a big fan of that Sabre look, and I'm a big fan of the Buffalo Slug. So uh, this is not the, quite the Buffalo Slug era, because that's probably another eight or nine years from this point when like guys like Chris Drury were on those teams and, uh, and the other guy I can't think of, Danny Breer. Yeah, Danny Breer. And those guys yeah. were on the Sabres. Uh, that, that was, that's a look I was definitely a fan of. I have a, I have a Buffalo sat, hat in the closet I got to dig out. Maybe I'll wear that in, uh, on the next edition, next time you do hockey cards. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the Sabres of that era, too. I mean, Ryan Miller, Maxim Afinagenov, they, they, had, they had some players. Uh, on defense here, you might remember him as a Shark, but also with the Avalanche, Sandus Ozilich, good mobile uh, puck-moving defenseman. Yeah, and uh, not the first time we've gotten an Ozilich card on this show, but uh, a heck of a player for his era. Yep, absolutely. And in today's game, Ozilich would be a, he'd be like, he'd be a top eight defenseman in today's era. Now, I find it the way they pack these together interesting because you got two guys that are associated as Rangers. Uh, Mark Messier here, but as a Canuck, and uh, once after he uh, left and signed the contract there. Not a popular guy in Vancouver. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was just trying to come up with a joke on the fly. <laughs> no, I mean, I was he just... insulted the city or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's just a typical, he never lived up to the contract, blah, blah, blah. They probably already didn't like him that much from his Edmonton days as Canuck fans. And then you bring, you know what I mean? Okay. You know, and then the next guy in the pack, Adam Graves. So two guys that were clutch on that Rangers team in 94. Yeah. Adam Graves, uh, one of the, uh, I mean, do we say he's an all-time great Ranger? I guess he do. I mean, his number is retired, but I think that's kind of like, uh, really you retired Adam Graves' number sort of thing. So it's, I don't know. So, you're a Rangers fan, so you tell me if he's uh, like a legit, like all-time great Ranger. I guess because so uh, I would say yes, probably. So here's why he's an all-time great. If you factor in the whole package, number one, big fan favorite. Number two, not only a fan favorite, but the guy like absolutely just was like lived up to it in every way. And I'll give you a quick story. Mike Riker, our friend Mike Riker, he was out with his buddies at a bar in Midtown Manhattan like a year or two after the Rangers won the cup. Graves walks in the restaurant. They 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 go over. They recognize him. They say hi to him. He comes. He sits down with them. Hangs out with them for a while. Says he's got to leave. After he leaves, they go to get the check. They're like, no, Mister. The waitress like, no, Mister. Graves took care of it. So uh, he he hangs out with a bunch of random guys for like a half hour. Takes care of it. like that's the kind of guy he was. So you you have those stories. He was their only their second fifty goal scorer ever in the ninety four year. He had fifty two goals. Yager would do it a few years later, and then other guys since then. But. You know, he had a thirty goal, thirty six goal season. He had, you know, he, he was a. Yeah, I, I would say he's a. He's one of those where he's a number retire worthy, but not a Hall of Famer. I think that's a good way to describe it. And yeah, uh, that that was a really cool story there of him just like randomly showing up. He must have had like a date or something that didn't like come through or something that he just like randomly sat down with a couple of random fans. Or New York in the mid '90s, you know, fresh off a cup. If you're a recognizable Ranger, you probably are. You could probably just go and get a free lunch at twelve o'clock, and then at five o'clock, you want to go to a different bar and get a free. You know what I mean? Like people absolutely love to hang out with you, and so it, that does feel nice. You know, it must be nice. It, it must be nice to have that level of fame where uh, you can sort of just go anywhere and people pay for your stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we got a few more cards to go here. We got a, a, a long time, very good NHL defenseman, Glenn Wesley with the Hurricanes and Whalers there. Yeah, how about that? That must have been, geez, that must have been the first year or two after they moved to Carolina. This was the first year after they moved because they, they, the 96 97 season was the last year. This is uh, 97 98. Uh, we got uh, Jason Allison from the uh, 
Boston Bruins, who's a guy who never really, you know, was good, but didn't really live up to the pedigree, but nonetheless still a good player. Played with right. the Capitals as well. Yeah, good player, not a great player, but uh, still a solid card to pull in a pack like this. Sure. This has been a heavy hitter pack as well, which I like about this pack. But we're going to close with a nice one, but we got another rookie here. Uh, Chris Dingman pictured with the Calgary Flames here. First round draft choice in 94. Had a decent career, you know. Left wing, I, you know. I do not like those uh, Flames jerseys. I'm glad they've uh, phased those out. Yeah, that diagonal stripe that's just like cutting up to the middle out of nowhere. Plus, like that's not your best shade of red. Like that Theo Flory era Flames, like that the ones they wear now. Like that's that that's the Flames colors you got to go with. Now for our last card, we already talked about this guy right before we opened the pack from our starting lineup studio audience, pictured in a uh, Anaheim Ducks jersey, Tay Mussolini. Team Mussolini, and I mean, how can you not love that? That that is a classic uh, Anaheim Mighty Ducks jersey right there. Yeah, yeah Solani and uh, our old pal Brian Hamilton, who used to be the play-by-play voice for the Ducks back in the day. He's like Tay Mussolini, nicest guy like in sports, like not even just hockey, just sports, like total just off the ice, on the ice, just total like gentleman of a human being. Oh, shout out to Brian Hamilton. I didn't even know that about him. So. uh it's nice, uh, nice uh, nugget to pull. I, for the record, I did try to find like online record. I could. It was right, right before the air or the internet, internet and recording. Everything was big when he was the voice. So you know, couldn't find anything back then. But I tried. I did try to find play by play from Hamilton. Well, I mean, it, it, the internet is forever, so you never know. Maybe someone has uh, found it in the years since then. So. That might be a project for a future edition of Rip and Riff, but I digress. Uh, I th- I Shout out Hambone. Mystery slab time. It is mystery slab time. Good pack here. We, I enjoyed that one. Uh, let's let's get to the slab here. I, I, this is my favorite part of the show. You, you, we really don't know what you're going to get. You know, you, you never know. It's like a box of chocolates. I so think somebody said that in the movie once. I don't know. Yeah, uh, somebody. Um, so we have. Um, all right, I'm already a fan of this one. We have a 2021. Donruss Optic, uh, Purple Shock, Mint Plus, 9.5 rated rookie card uh, of your guy, Amon Ra St. Brown. Love me some Amon Ra St. Brown. So, all right, the, the 21 Donruss, Amon Ra St. Brown, what was the name of the series? Uh, well, this is a rated rookie card. Rated it's rookie. Purple okay. Shock. Love the rated rookies. Purple Shock see what we could get on ebay for oh that dude that's a you definitely got your money's worth there yeah that's a that's a nice one a 9.5 and yeah st brown i got him as a fourth round draft pick in our rookie draft and talk about paying dividends i think everyone just assumed he'd stink because his brother's not good yeah but i mean sometimes you know maybe it was the ramon martinez pedro martinez effect you know Right, so uh, it just goes to show you cannot judge a book by its cover, or its last name, or its last name. But yeah, I I like this. The I like the whole purple shock vibe going on there. I can't tell who that is in the background. Somebody on the bills, but uh, um, See. yeah, that's a that's a very nice card there. Yeah, that's a that's a keeper because I mean, he, as good as he is for the Lions, I mean, he, he can still put up another few seasons like this. So that that's definitely one you're going to hold on to, I would imagine. He's going yeah, he's going to be I mean, he's not a top 5 receiver, but he's probably like borderline top 10 would be my where I'd probably put him and uh he's a guy who's certainly talented enough where he could uh uh wind up having uh that kind of season. So uh, I'm trying to get my camera to refocus. I was going to say, as Jared tries to get his camera to autofocus here, uh, yeah, that, that, that's doing, good. I, I doing a horrible that. job with it, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, he is tr- he he has emerged to be a true number one receiver. And I know we were talking about the top receivers in the league. He's absolutely in that second tier after the guys we spoke about earlier: Hill, Jefferson, Chase. Uh, you know, he's absolutely in that second tier. Yep. So, how about that? I'm going to keep doing this with my camera. It's very professional for. Uh, a show like this where I just I, I, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying it here. There and there go. we go. Now we're now now we're nice and focused again. So uh you know the the marvels of modern technology. So how about that? All right. It's time for uh starting that was our best mystery slab pull. I I'm think sorry? That, was our, that was probably our best mystery slab pull. Yeah, I mean that's certainly one of the better ones. I think my favorite one out of all the ones we've done I, and I only have a few of these left and we're starting to run out of them. But uh 
I think my favorite one so far is Jordan Love, but this is okay. probably yeah, this is definitely like top three or four. So then, if if we got St. Brown, you you got Love the Jordan Love. We're looking for that Kirk Cousins, so that means we need to pull a Bears one and a, and a Vikings one. You have the whole NFC North. Yeah, uh, we'll have the whole NFC North unless uh, Sam Darnold winds up signing with the Bears or something. Then he'll uh, <laughs> then we'll, we'll, we'll bear by association. That Check that box. Now, speaking of boxes, we got a starting lineup here. Uh, we're going to unbox. It's the figure five. Now, uh, we did plenty of hockey and football on the show today. I said, let's let's do a little baseball. So uh, you got five okay. questions to figure out the baseball player that's in this box. Sounds good. And uh, I'm glad you showed me the back of the box and not the front of it, because that would have made this uh, really easy. So we would have had to stop. I would have to go downstairs and get another one. And we would have had to edit that in. <laughs> um all right let's start off with uh a pretty good question here was this player a world series champion this player it was a world series champion yes was he a world series champion with the team that he's predicted uh predicted in uh, that's not a word but you know what i'm trying to say depicted the, in the, yes the, the team the, he, the, the team that he's on on the figure the team he's on on the figure is the team he won the World Series in. Okay. Um, did this player ever win a major award like MVP or Cy Young? Let me double check that. I don't believe I'd so. I'd include Rookie of the Year as well in there. See, the, the first question I would have asked, I'm not going to say it until we're done. Um, he won a postseason. MVP award for a series. He won a championship series MVP. A championship series MVP. Okay. Um, did this player ever play for the New York Yankees? You have one more question. Yes. Um, is, is this player a New York Yankee in the figure? Yeah, you already asked that. We, yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, well, yeah, no, no that's, it's, a, it's, a it's a different question. Yeah. Yes, he is. Um. All right. So, all right. So that's all the questions. Um. Won a postseason series MVP award. ALCS MVP. ALCS MVP. You go a lot of different directions there because they were in a lot of ALCSs in the late 90s. Uh, but I'm going to guess that this is... Uh, I'm going to guess this is Bernie Williams. Well, I do have some Bernie Williams in the uh, box that still need to be opened. And while I believe he won the 96 ALCS MVP award against the Orioles... Uh, that is not the guy. Now, the, what I would the piece of advice I'm going to give you one of your questions when you find out if it's a baseball player should always be batter or pitcher because that way you can at least eliminate a lot right off the bat. Fair enough. LDK. Okay. Orlando Hernandez won the ALCS MVP. Let me look up the year, what it was, but might have been 98 his rookie year. I think it was on the 98 team, wasn't he? Uh, let's see. Postseason pitching. He was the '99 MVP. Yes, 99. and he was. Yeah, and he was on the. Yeah, he won rings in '98, '99, and 2000, and then apparently won a ring with the White Sox in '05. So, yeah, he was. Uh, the White Sox had a lot of those random dudes in '05. Like, like I think Jose Contreras was on that team as well. So, uh, they just had a lot of random dudes on that team that somehow that I, I don't know how that White Sox team won a World Series. We should you're, ask Bill one day. Let's go through the, the who's who of that lineup quick. AJ Pruszynski, Paul Konerko, uh, Juan Uribe, Joe Creedy, Scott Pitsednik, Aaron Rowan, Jermaine Dye, Carl Everett. Uh, let's see. Frank Thomas on the bench. Uh, Pitching-wise, Freddie Garcia, Jose Contreras, Mark Burley, uh, Damaso Marte. Wow. Talk about Bobby Jenks. There's, There's a lot names. of former and future Yankees on this list. <laughs> yes. Damaso Marse was on the 09 team. Uh, Bobby Jenks was on the Red Sox at one point, I think. You got uh, Brandon McCarthy's on the team. John Garland on that team. So, yeah, they, they beat the Astros that year. They beat Lance Berkman and an aging uh, Biggio. And not just them, but Clemens and Pettit when they were in uh, Houston as well. That's right. 
Now, of course, with a guy with El Duque, with that signature windup that he's known for, the card has to be that right there. And the position has to be that, which yeah, it the is. the figure has to be that as well. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, unfortunately, the knee's not as high as you would like on an El Duque figure. And, it's, and you probably want that knee straight, too, because he would really get that leg pretty straight when he would go up, too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, you have to be pre uh, pretty pleased with a figure like that. Number 26 in your uh, program lineups. So, uh, very cool. Uh, I can't really see the detail on it. Does, uh, does he have the pinstripes there? So, that's one thing that does annoy me about the Yankees' uh, starting lineups is that the white uniforms, they never did pinstripes. I guess because it just was too hard to do. They didn't do pinstripes for anybody. So, white uniforms were always white, even if they were pinstriped. Right. So that's why I actually and, uh, preferred road Yankee starting lineups because – Gray New York still looks good. Like that's yeah, authentic. I, know, I, I know you've mentioned that before in the show, and I couldn't really tell on this one. So uh, I figured this is, I mean, this was what, 99, 2000, this figure came out. So uh, 2000, this, yeah. I, I was kind of hoping by then technology would have gotten to a point where it was uh, doable, but I guess not. I'm going to say the technology existed, but the cost to do it probably was not, the juice probably wasn't worth the squeeze. El Duque, one of my favorite Yankees of all time to watch. Like, if he if he was borderline appointment pitching when he was at his peak every fifth day, like, oh, El Duque's on the mound, better believe I'm watching that game. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And his brother, Levon, I have a Levon Marlins uh, one as well in the stash downstairs. So I'll have both Hernandez brothers represented here in time. But he'll join the starting lineup studio audience. And for this week, we got a, a little bit of a hodgepodge here. Basically, just guys that have been coming in the mail that I want them to throw. Now, we already mentioned Tamu Solane, who was unboxed last week. Bernie Williams there in the front, the 97 edition of, and you, you guessed him earlier. We got a 90 Jim Everett. Don't call me Chris. Then uh, we got James Worthy there from uh, the 90 series. And then Larry Bird from the 88 series. Does Jim Rome become Jim Rome without needling Jim Everett rete uh, repeatedly by calling him Chris? That's a good question. Um, I mean, he's still one of the biggest names in our industry in terms of sports talk radio, but, like, I mean, when's the last time? I, his name. I feel like that's what, what got him on the map and got him on that path. Right, but, like, you know, when's the last time anyone, like, talked about Jim Rome or, like, listened to Jim Rome? And, like, he's I know what... He's probably like, yeah, like he's probably like, you know, like people now, he, he's probably like five, 10 years ago. Like that was like the end of the Rome era. Right. Like, I feel like he's probably, if anything, he's probably like a character of himself now. Like he's probably, I, I don't want to say retire because like, obviously they're still paying him a ton of money to do what he's doing. So like, shout out to him. Like, I'm not going to knock someone for securing the bag, but um. Yeah, I mean, like, I honestly don't know. I mean, uh, that's such a different era. Like, you know, early 90s. I mean, the, the you know, just the, the whole industry was, you know, obviously different then. So yeah. you almost had to do something like, like nowadays you can go up and like slap a guy like in a in line and target and you'll get a viral following. But like back then you had to do something like that to get TV attention because there was no social media. So it wasn't big enough for the a sports news or a local news or whatever to pick up. So like, you know, he's, I guess in that frame, he was ahead of his time, you know, making a scene about himself to get his name out there. Right. And like, I'm not saying it's necessarily the same thing as like, you know, cause you, you sort of like look at like the modern equivalents of like how, you know, prominent like sports shows, like get on the map. And like, I, I guess the modern examples would be like Pat McAfee, the bar stool guys, like the part of my take guys. And, but like, that's a whole different, sort of different animal there so apples and, and oranges like, right and the way people get noticed now is just totally different you know with with the internet and viral videos and all that sort of stuff yeah well nonetheless jim everett don't call me chris he's in the lineup for this week and then next week el duque will be in the audience but we might have to put a couple of chairs between him and the next person if he goes to kick that leg up we don't want him to accidentally kick somebody in the chin that wouldn't be good we get sued no, we don't want that, that yeah, we definitely don't want a lawsuit. Oh, and not, not something that's supposed to be fun. But that'll do it for another edition of R&R &R here for a Saturday afternoon. Don't forget NFL playoffs kick off later. Can't wait for that action. But, uh, yeah, been a great episode of R&R &R here on the BSN and Fantasy Alarm YouTube pages. But for at Mr. Jared Moore on Twitter, I am at Pucking Thoughts Adam Bernard. We'll be ripping some more packs open with you next Saturday here on Rip and Breathe.